Okay, I have my first three frets installed here. Um, you can actually get this thing started going quite a ways in before you need the, uh, the little jig. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure to get that thing coming across. And having the rubber helps conform to the radius and because I'm using a compound radius each fret would have its own radius so I can't use one standard block. What I'm doing here is I'm adding that little bevel with this actually it's a four-sided file. I'd mentioned I was using a three-sided, but I've gone to this four-sided mini file. And I'm just just lightly hitting it. It doesn't take much. And then from here I'll just double check my depth again. And then I'll install my fret. Anyways, what I do when I cut my fret wire, I will cut the piece I need on an angle. Because this will be the leading edge of the fret. And then I'll just take my one of my needle files and I'll just kind of file this and ramp it so it's not going to bite into the wood kind of they call it like a ski ramp effect and uh, I'll just kind of hit the tang a little bit as well because it might have spread out a little bit from the nipping And that should be all set. I do that with each and every one. A little bit tedious, but this is my chosen method of installing, so I gotta put up with it. Anyways, I'm just gonna check my progress just to see how I'm doing. I've got this razor blade. I'm just gonna drop it on top. Now, mind you, this is just the short section. I start at the top end of the neck because there is less playing up here than from the twelfth fret down and that's where you want it to be uh, perfect and uh, so far everything seems to be doing okay by the time I get down to the twelfth fret I'll feel more comfortable and things will go probably a little quicker but so far everything seems to be pretty good Okay, so we're at the 12th fret mark, and I've just started my second uh, length. I try to uh, conserve as much as I can to get the most out of my uh, fret wire. And we'll just kind of look down here. Looking pretty good. I will still need to level this uh, fret job. I haven't done too many necks, but uh, it's turning out pretty good. Just a bit of a uh, We'll just talk about my little unit jig I'm using here. <clears throat> the idea for doing the uh, side installation to begin with came from uh, reading posts by Preeb on the Fender Telecaster forum or Gilles Garon, I believe that's how you pronounce that, it could be wrong. And this is his method of installing. I thought, you know what, this might be uh, something a little different to try. At the time when I first started doing uh, my first neck, I hadn't uh, purchased a hammer or an arbor press, which is what most co commonly, uh, what most guys commonly will use. But I got thinking about it, I thought I'm going to try something different, and I stumbled on that thread. Anyways, this is a piece of, I think it's about three quarters inch thick. It's just a sanding block, rubber sanding block. You can probably recognize that. And I filed a groove to a depth that would fit the crown. This blue tape actually aids in sliding across the neck and it keeps any rubber from going onto the neck. And uh, I just have a little bracket that I modified and, and screwed in there. And a little block to catch the end of the uh, fret. I thought I would use a jig to pull it across and so this eyelet's there but I don't use it. It uh, works pretty good. As I said before, because of the compound radius, I need to conform to each fret 
uh, radius which would be different so the rubber this rubber seems to do the trick if I was doing a, a straight across uh, radius seven and a half or nine and a half then I could go to a more of a solid uh, jig unit but this uh, is flexible enough but it's it's you can't really tell but it's durable enough that I can push down on it and I'm not going to dig right into the wood and um, it'll also conform to the compound. The only downfall that I can see with doing a fret installation like this is you need to keep your pr down pressure well it needs to be the same for each fret because that's where you're going to run into trouble if you start going lower on a fret then it's going to be the low point you're going to definitely need to work around that with your leveling um, so a consistent down pressure which is probably near impossible um, needs to be achieved and because once you run that fret down through the uh, side of the slot the tangs or the barbs and the tang will create their own slot so that the fret won't come up but it won't go down either so you're kind of stuck with what you got so that's why I double check it goes a little longer but um, I like it I didn't have to buy any tools for it and it's a little quieter than hammering and uh, I think the more you do and the better you get at it, the more proficient you get at it, the better you'll get with it and you'll probably reduce the amount of leveling you need to do. Also, um, having a, a perfectly straight fingerboard will help as well. And yeah, so I'm just going to continue on and then uh, from here we'll uh, nip the ends off and get things ready for finishing. It'll be interesting to see how how this thing performs. Anyways, we'll catch it. Okay, so our fretting installation is completed, and I'm just gonna shot down the length of it. She looks pretty good. You can tell also um, keeping that edge sharp will definitely make a difference when you're installing your frets because you don't want that to be a rolled rounded corner or else you'd have issues with the fret and trying to figure out what to do with it as it comes straight out across you wouldn't be able to bend it Okay, so we'll continue on.